Yo, hello and welcome back to another strat analysis. The last analysis we did targeted Dodo before its nerf a while back. So it seems that I don't have a strat analysis of any meta strat online right now. But this changes today. So as the title suggests, let's talk about cycling. If you don't care about the details, jump to the time displayed right now for a really quick TLDR at the end. If you want to hear about these details, buckle up, this is going to be a deep dive. In my eyes, the cycling strat seems to be not too overpowered, but definitely A tier. It's arguably the best strat in the game right now, and I'll tell you why in a second. Overall, to me, the meta seems to be pretty much solved, and no strat seems to be too overpowered in any way. Although, I don't really feel that this meta actually is balanced, and I really think this game needs a few tweaks in order for the meta to first stabilize and be more versatile, but I do think we're in a healthy state right now. But as we want to deep dive into cycling here, my thoughts on the meta might find a place in another video sometime soon. So, cycling. I'll cover this uh, with the standard pack or free to play pack in mind, because I think the majority of you is playing this one over pack 2. But everything I say here applies to pack 2 as well. All core units are available in both packs, and the only difference your chosen pack actually makes are flex slots and lineups you're playing against. Early game. Play your early game normally. Either try to win every early game round with ants, fishes and otters, or just go full on dogs. Winning matches early leaves you with more flexibility later, as you can afford losing a round or two in the later stages of the game. Going ducks early will probably make you lose both first rounds, but will make you power spike hard in the mid game. Especially with the latest update, where you start with 10 HP, this route to play is extremely strong. If you by the way don't understand what I'm talking about here, check out my video where I've gone over the patch notes in detail, which should be linked in the top right corner right now. So, what I do basically is picking up every duck I see early and fill the rest with ants and fishes and otters too, but just make sure your otter won't buff a duck. Because as soon as you hit turn 3, you wanna search for your core unit, the dog. If you reroll a few times and can't find it, just forget this strat and come back to it at a later time. If you really wanna force it, picking up a dog in turn 4 could still be good enough, especially if you play ducks. Without dogs, I wouldn't recommend picking up dog in turn 4 though, usually that's too late. So if you find a dog in turn 3, sell your dogs to pick up a buff dog. If you manage to get it to 5-5 five, five already here, you're feeling very good cause that game is almost won already. Mid game. Now we're getting to the part where this strat got its name from. When you got a dog on your board, what you wanna do is buying units and selling them directly again. I refer to this as cycling. With every unit bought, your dog grows permanently for either one attack or one HP. Now for a quick bit of math. And take note, we're doing a test tomorrow. Buying and selling a unit again costs effectively two gold. Buying one costs three, but you're getting one gold back when selling. So you're paying basically two gold for one attack or one HP. Every round you have 10 gold. If you start by selling a unit to make space for cycling, you start cycling with 11 gold. Doing this 4 times leaves you with 3 gold, so you can buy one additional unit to keep for a round in theory. Early in the game though, you have to reroll because you don't have access to 5 shop slots here. This is only the case from round 9 onwards, so basically late game. So as you have to reroll once per round, you can buy 4 units effectively, providing the dog with 4 stats distributed to attack or HP by chance. Per 10 gold you're getting 4 stats, meaning 0.4 stats per 1 gold. Let me get this straight, this is really bad actually. <laughs> but this threat gets more potent really quickly though. Let's first take a look at different animals to slot in. First, shrimp. It actually provides quite a lot of HP over time, so don't underestimate it like I did for like over a month or so. Sticking with the math we just did, with the shrimp on the board, cycling a unit costs 2 gold and provides 1 stat for the dog, and 1 HP assigned randomly from the shrimp. Again, we can do this 4 times in the mid game, leaving us with 8 stats gained in this round's shop phase. Per 10 gold you're now getting 8 stats, meaning almost 1 stat per 1 gold spent. This slowly is getting better here, that's not too shabby. Now add a swan to the mix. The swan now provides a crucial bit of gold we can use here. Let's go back to the math. Without the swan before round 9, we can cycle 3 times, leaving us with 5 gold, cause we started with 11, 
but we have to reroll at least one, so that leaves us with four gold. Enough to buy only one unit to keep for the round, which we always want to do, by the way. But with the swan now, we start with 12 gold basically. Again, because we start with 10 every round, the swan adds one, and we sell the unit we kept the round before. So with 12 gold, we can cycle four times, reroll once, what we have to do anyways because we don't have five slots, and end up with three gold, which covers the unit we want to keep for the round. As you can see, this one is pretty vital because it basically enables us to cycle one additional time per round which in turn provides one additional shrimp and dog trigger. Staying on topic regarding increasing the potency of this strat, it should be noted that a level 2 dog as soon as you can get it is pretty vital too. Because every trigger of the dog now buffs the dog by either 2 attack or 2 HP. Doing this with a swan on board ends up being quite strong because with 5 triggers we got 10 stats on the dog. With a shrimp on the board we get an additional 5 triggers for 5 HP. A level 2 shrimp provides also 10 stats in raw HP. With dog on level 2 and shrimp on level 2 and one swan, you get 20 stats per round, most of them on your evergreen core unit, the dog. This is not hard to achieve and now this is really strong. As you start your turn with 11 gold because of the swan, 20 divided by 11 is almost like 2 stats per 1 gold. This is extremely broken, keep that ratio in mind for later. Okay, so now how does the ideal mid-game lineup look like then? We got a level 2 shrimp, we got a swan, we got a dog too, and of course we got a cycling slot. And the last slot is pretty flexible, but I want to point out that it can be pretty busted to run a second shrimp here. Now with a second shrimp on the board, this lineup is in fact a pretty much all-in lineup for your dog, because its back is going to hurt from carrying your team. The shrimp obviously provide a lot of HP to your board, but the dog is the only one attacking for a lot of damage. You can run this if your dog is already kinda big. A second swan can also provide quite a lot of value, as starting with 13 gold enables you to reroll once more, which of course means you're gonna find tastier units to cycle with, or find copies of dogs or shrimps. Or just go a different route and support your dog with a different unit. A total comes in mind here. The total in front of the dog is actually really good, because it guarantees the dog to be able to attack at least twice. Also, I think a monkey means business in this strat. Place your dog up front and let the monkey feed the dog to ridiculous degrees. Penguin and skunk are nice flex units as well. Also a crab can do really well, although if the shrimp buffs the crab, you're kinda sad. But through the shrimp, your HP throughout the board is quite high already, so a crab with meat bone on it is kinda strong too. Generally, what you want to prevent though in having are units which need attention. Dodo needs food, you don't have the money for that. Badger too is quite a bad idea. Hippo, rooster, stuff like that. You wanna focus on your dog, the fifth slot should be filled in with a unit you don't have to worry about and on its own without any work can provide value and support like the parents we never had. Let me blow your mind for the expansion pack real quick. Look at that buffalo, that one is designed to go in there. Now, which units you wish to cycle with? There are a few units in the game which provide additional value when you buy or sell them. If you see these in the shop when cycling, always prioritize those. It's usually a good idea if you're low on gold in this very round, to freeze them to be able to cycle them next round. These are Beaver, Duck, occasionally, Otter, Pig, which by the way actually fucks over your math we did earlier, so pay attention in here to min-max with this one. Take your time and go through your steps in the head before doing it in-game. Snail should never be forgotten, of course only if you lost the last round. No squirrel, by the way, fuck that, never buy this. Cow, that's probably the best one. The expansion pack also has Owl, which is amazing for cycling. Regarding units you want to keep for the round, there are also a few which are better than others. Because usually, you want to keep them for one round and sell them in the beginning of the next shop phase. Well, it would be awesome to pick up a unit which will provide a lasting value even after you sold it again, wouldn't it? Aim for Giraffe, Penguin, Monkey, but as I told you earlier, you might want to think about keeping that one because it's, it's really that good. In an expansion pack, there's also that blue bird, yeah, which I actually hate, but if you don't hate it, yeah, it will leave you one additional attack if you get it for one round. Uh, fuck blue bird, though. 
Finally, let's talk late game. I'll make this short as this is nothing too crazy. Sometimes your dog will reach max stats, which is actually 50-50. If that's the case, you obviously want to stop cycling. Fill your board with nice late game units. I love running a dog with melon or garlic, behind it a snake, behind that a tiger. Maybe even pick up a cat and go nuts with food. If you find fly, tiger and turkey, obviously play that. But that pivot is sometimes quite hard to do because it's a complete 180 which will cost you a round or two so only do that if you're really healthy. If your dog is not yet maxed out and you find a dragon, oh you're in for a ride let me tell you. Pick up the dragon and fish for tier 1 units. Just imagine cycling an otter with a dragon on the board and a level 2 dog and a level 2 shrimp. Can it get any tastier? Last time I saw a group swallowing that much, I had to open up a private tab before that. <laughs> oh my god, this is such, such a bad joke. I was looking forward to dropping this one so long. <laughs> ah, okay, fo focus now. Generally, the shrimp has no use late game. Swan is also questionable. Probably sell these two as soon as you're seeing yourself not cycling that much anymore or seeing you lose because of missing stats from these two units. As you can tell, this overall seems to be a mid game strategy. In the late game you just have to adjust your board more or less. Just pay attention. If you see yourself starting to lose a round or drawing often, think about how your board could get any stronger. I usually don't cycle hard anymore in the late game. I reroll more often to find tastier units. I'll leave it at that because especially with this trend, the late game can look so different every game where the mid game always pretty much looks the same. If you have the dream lineup for the late game in mind right now, don't hesitate to share it down in the comments. A few words for min-maxing cycling though. Uh, regarding the math earlier, you really have to keep in mind that this math quickly falls apart if you, for example, pick up a copy of your dog or shrimp for example, because you're probably going to combine that one instead of selling it. That means that you just paid 3 gold effectively instead of 2. Also, sometimes a pair in the shop is just straight up better than cycling. So bear with me for a moment. You pay 3 gold for the pair and are getting plus 2 plus 2 out of it. So 4 stats for 3 gold, which basically means over 1 stat per gold. Remember the ratio earlier where I said to remember it? Yeah, that was the absolute dream scenario with 2 stats per 1 gold, while having a level 2 dog and a level 2 shrimp and a swan. So in order to beat the value of the pair with cycling, you need to have either the dog or shrimp on level 2. If you don't own a shrimp, you have to have a level 3 dog to beat this value. In addition, the pair can buff any unit you like, while cycling provides random buffs by shrimp or only buffs on dog by the dog itself, so that's a value in of itself. So the actual value of the pair really depends. If you see a pair, stop for a moment and do the math real quick. Same goes for pizza or sushi, those provide quite a lot of stats per goal too. One last tip for you and this is some pro gamer shit. There are units which on one side fuck over the math but provide additional value by pilling them. Spider for example. Cycling it just by itself costs 2 gold effectively, like we already established, and that will trigger the dog on the shrimp once. Pilling it though costs 3 gold effectively. You buy spider, the dog gets a trigger, you spend 3 gold. You pill it, you now spend 4 gold. The dog gets an additional trigger though. If you now sell the unit your shrimp gets a trigger and you spend 3 gold effectively. Kinda neat don't you think? Same goes by the way for Cricket, Deer and Rooster and the Eagle in the expansion pack. Doing the math on that though will get kind of frustrating for both of us, so do it yourself if you like. Oh, and by the way, if you actually have two slots available for cycling, pill a sheep. Stonks my man, go to Wall Street Bats and post that clip if you manage to do so. Okay, whew. Now that you know how this strat works, the one important question remaining is how strong it actually is. Uh, I for myself think it's pretty strong and probably the strongest strat in the game, but not by much. It may seem like it's really really strong, but the downsides of the strat are actually not too apparent. In every other strat you are going to reroll much more times, which also means that your expected value per shop phase per unit decreases for this strat. You just won't get anything to level 3 fast and you just won't find nice units for your late game that easily if you're not rerolling that much. And rerolling is counterintuitive to the core strat idea of this strat. Also, as discussed earlier, if your dog stays level 1 and you don't get a monkey early, chances are that you will get just outperformed by stats by your opponent really quick. 
Also food. I'm not a huge fan of food overall. And I think the food build is straight up bad. Sorry, Northern Line, I hate to break it to you. But sometimes food can actually help a lineup out in big ways. But you just won't be able to pick up much food in the mid game with this strat. Because you need all of your money to be spent on cycling. Of course, a garlic on the dog is really nice, and you probably should pick one up in the mid game, but I'm not too certain if that's actually that good. So basically, the more you go all in on cycling, the more the dog will grow. The less you all in you go with it, the less you're actually needing your dog. So in essence, either go all in or play a different strat. Now for the quick TLDR. Buy dog early, preferably round 3, and every turn buy and sell units directly again. Keep shrimp and swan on the board. Buying and selling units will make your dog grow big pretty early, so you're really strong in the mid game. The late game is completely up to you, because you're gonna want to stop cycling if you're getting into the late game. Meaning, sell shrimp and swan again, and buy valuable units and ride on your huge dog into the sunset, dragon and other nice late game units trailing both of you in short distance. So, what strat should I cover next time? Please let me know in the comments below, I'm really curious. Now, jump in game, forest dog and slap your opponents who didn't bother watching this video to learn about the, well, arguably strongest strat in this game. See you in game and enjoy my end card, which is actually overdue already. I hate when my end card is so late that I have to keep talking to fi- As always, if you like this video, never tell me or your friends. And also please never share this around. Also, please make sure to not like this video. If you want to see more content like this, definitely don't subscribe to my channel and never check out this video displayed over here. See you in the next video. I'm out.